So how many windows are in all of New York City? Now, if this is your first time hearing this question, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck, what kind of a question is this? How are you supposed to know the answer to that? But this is actually a fairly common type of question that gets asked in consulting and strategy case interviews, also known as market sizing. Now, today I'm going to walk you through my approach and how I would think through a question like, how many windows are in New York City? For those of you who are new to the channel, my name's Matt. I'm currently working in strategy at Google. Before that, I was a management consultant at BCG. And I make these videos because I like it, but let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do when you get asked a question that is really vague and really ambiguous is to identify that it is a market sizing question. And so it'll be pretty obvious to you because if you get asked something like how many windows are in New York City and you're not given any kind of data, or maybe you get asked something like, how many bottles of wine are in all of France? And the interviewer sits there and looks at you expectantly, then you're probably being asked a market sizing question. But don't worry. If you get caught off guard by it, just remember, all you have to do to solve these questions is a few things. The first is you need to ask clarifying questions. And so in our example, how many windows are in New York City? A few things come to my mind, including what does New York City even mean, right? New York is the five boroughs. This could mean just Manhattan, or it could mean Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Staten Island, and Queens, right? And so being super specific about what is actually being asked is critically important. So I've added this question here, what does New York City mean? Does it mean Manhattan? And so let's say in this scenario that the interviewer says, yes, we're talking about Manhattan alone, so the island. Second question is, what kinds of windows are we talking about, right? Are we talking about windows that are on houses, or are we talking about windows that are on office buildings, right? Or maybe we're talking about all windows in general, period. Anything that is like a sheet of glass on a building could be considered a window. And then other questions you want to be thinking about are things like, you know, maybe how large is the average window, or how can we segment the window types, right? Because the name of the game here is you want to be able to break down a very large number into small components. And so the process that I usually follow when it comes to setting up the equation, which you're going to then use to come up with a number, is you want to start with determining what sort of anchor data you have. And so anchor data is anything that is like population or size or square footage, any of these like very large numbers, round numbers that are usually going to be given by the interviewer or that you can reasonably estimate based on your general knowledge, right? For example, like I know that there's around 300 million people in the US. And so if I were asked about some other country, I could roughly speaking think about how large the US is and then how large the other country is in relation to that and apply some sort of assumption to my anchor number, which would be like the population of the US. And so you always want to be thinking about what sort of anchor data you can use that'll help you in this market sizing question. And oftentimes you also can ask your interviewer if they have any data related to that, because sometimes they will provide you with the anchor data. Now, what you want to do after that, though, is you want to start applying the segmentation. And so segmentation, as I mentioned, is just a fancy word for how are we going to split up this big number and use it to our advantage so that we can then figure out how many windows are in New York. And you want to create a formula. And this formula is going to involve coming up with certain assumptions. And so as you're making the formula, don't worry about what the assumptions are. We'll come back to that later. And eventually, we'll do the math. And then the last step is we want to do a sanity check. Now, I've said a whole lot, but let me now walk you through an example of how I would actually do this. And so I've written some stuff down here on the left-hand side, but just to walk you through it, what came to my mind when I was thinking about this question of how many windows are in New York City is, OK, maybe my anchored number can be the size of Manhattan. So for example, the square mileage of Manhattan. And based on that, I would then want to figure out how many blocks on average are in Manhattan. Now, why do I want to know how many blocks are in Manhattan? Well, because it's an easier unit with which I can then estimate how many buildings there are and then how many windows there are in each building, right? And so I'm sort of working my way down here where I divide by the average size of one block 
to get to a estimate of the number of blocks. And then from there, though, I'm going to segment into two groups. I'm going to segment into residential buildings, which I will define roughly as buildings that people live in that are maybe uh, a little bit smaller, more residential. These are maybe like brick buildings that you might see on the street. They're not going to be very tall. And the other segment, which is going to be commercial buildings. Now, these will be the buildings that if you've ever been to Times Square or Midtown Manhattan, you'll see them because they're towering high and they're probably 50 stories in the air. And so these buildings, the reason why I want to segment them differently from the residential buildings is because they're just so different. They're a lot larger on average and they tend to have a lot more windows on them. And within each segment, though, we still need to get to how many windows there are, right? And so this is where we are going to have to make an assumption around how many residential buildings there are in a given block and then how many windows there are in a given residential building. Same thing for the commercial buildings. And so we're basically going to estimate the number of commercial buildings on the average New York City block. And then we're going to multiply that by the number of windows per building. And so the goal in these kinds of interviews is you want to basically show the interviewer that you can think through a structured approach to coming up with some sort of number. Now, the objective is not actually to get to the right number because no one actually knows how many windows are in New York City. I mean, if you do, let me know in the comments and I'd love to have you fact check that number. But the goal is just to see that you can take something that's really ambiguous and come up with a structured problem solving approach, right? And so as long as your assumptions are somewhat reasonable and backed up by logic, then it doesn't really matter ultimately what the end number is as long as the approach made sense. And so I'm going to walk you through here with some numbers. Let's say that I ask the interviewer for information on the size of Manhattan and they tell me that Manhattan is roughly 20 square miles large. So that's the square mileage of Manhattan. Now I'm going to apply an assumption to the size of one block. And based on my experience, you know, I live in New York City. Having walked these blocks before, obviously, if midtown, the blocks are going to be a lot bigger versus if you're, you know, somewhere downtown where the blocks are a lot smaller. But I would say on average, the size of a block is probably like 1% of a square mile. And so what that means is that on average, the number of blocks in New York City is going to be 2,000. Now, I'm keeping this round numbers here so it's easy to follow, but you want to basically walk your interviewer through the math as you do it. And the alternative approach, if you don't feel comfortable walking them through the math live, is to just ask for a couple seconds to do the math first and then go back and walk them through the entire thing once you've gotten the solution. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more tricky because now we need to split it between residential buildings and commercial buildings. And we're now going to need to basically apply assumptions based on our own experience to get the number of residential buildings and the number of commercial buildings. And so in my experience, you know, having worked in Midtown Manhattan before, I would say that these commercial buildings, there's probably four or five commercial buildings per block because these are massive. Remember, these are massive office buildings. And max is probably going to be like five commercial buildings per block. Now, on the other hand, residential buildings tend to be a, a little bit smaller. And so if we're talking about a neighborhood like maybe Soho, for example, where you have a lot more smaller brick buildings and you know these are homes that people actually live in, maybe you could see 20 buildings per block instead of five. Coming down here now, though, to the number of windows per building, how do we calculate or how do we even estimate the number of windows per building? Well, I'm going to propose that we actually need to do a little bit more thinking and we need to break this apart into the number of floors that each building has and the number of windows per floor, right? Because let's say on average, the average residential building has on any given floor, let's say, four windows in the front and then maybe four windows in the back and maybe no windows on the side because in Manhattan buildings are so cramped together that oftentimes buildings will just be right next to each other and so there will be no buildings on the side. And so let's say they have eight windows on each floor on average. Now how many floors does a residential building have though? 
And I would say, based on my experience, having lived in one of these residential buildings, most of these buildings are not gonna be that much taller than say, 10 to 15 floors. And so let's just say 10 floors here, put a nice round number to it, and eight windows per floor, which means roughly 80 windows per residential building, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by 20 residential buildings per block, which is roughly 1,600 windows on a given block. Now on the side of the commercial buildings, now the number of windows per floor and the number of floors is gonna be much, much higher because these buildings are really tall and really large. And so I would say on average, you're probably going to have 40 to 50 floors, maybe even more in a New York City high rise. And so let's just go with say 40 floors on average. And if I think about the number of windows per floor, now a lot of these commercial buildings have floor to ceiling windows that stretch around the entire length of the floor. And so on all four sides, you're going to have windows. And so let's just say that there's 20 to 30 of these massive floor to ceiling windows on each side. And assuming this is a square shaped building, then we're gonna have 100 windows on all four sides. And so what this means is we're gonna end up actually for the average 40 floor building is 4,000 windows, right? And if we multiply that by five commercial buildings per block on average, that gives us 20,000 windows on a block with commercial buildings. Now, some of you may be thinking now, okay, so all we have to do, right, is we have to add 1,600 to the 20K to get the number of windows per block, right? But that's actually not the case because remember, not all blocks are the same. And so some blocks are going to be 100% commercial buildings and other blocks are going to be 100% residential buildings. And then others still will be a mix of commercial and residential buildings. Now, I'm not gonna go into a crazy level of detail here because theoretically we could make this as detailed as we want and I would spend all day recording this, but I'm gonna assume for simplicity's sake that 50% of the 2000 blocks in New York City are residential and then 50% are commercial. And so what that means is we need to take 1,000 and multiply by the 1,600, which is going to give us 1.6 million for the residential buildings. And then I'm gonna take 1,000 and multiply it by 20,000 to get to the number of windows for the commercial buildings, which is 20 million. And so now I can add these two numbers together and get 21.6 million, or let's just round up to 22 million windows. Now, after you do all of this math, it's important to take a step back and to think about whether or not these numbers even make sense, aka sanity check your work. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit difficult to sanity check this kind of a number because you don't really have too many metrics to compare it to, right? Like you don't know how many windows are in other cities like London or Boston or Tokyo, for example. And so it's going to be hard to think about whether or not this is a reasonable number. But your interviewer is going to probably ask you like, hey, yeah, so you got this 22 million number, what do you think about it? And so the onus is on you to sort of take a step back and talk aloud and respond to your interviewer basically saying something along the lines of, well, based on the methodology that I've come up with and assuming that you know the anchor number that I started with was reasonable, which is 20 square miles, this number feels reasonable to me. And given the fact that I live in New York and I've walked some of these blocks before and seen how many buildings are in each block. I feel fairly confident in the assumptions here. However, that said, it would always be good to validate the assumptions after the fact by going out there and actually counting the number of buildings on a block, for example, or gathering some sort of primary data just so that we can validate our assumptions. And again, the objective of these questions, these market sizing questions, is simply to test whether or not you can think in a structured way and come up with a problem solving approach, not whether or not you can get to the actual answer or the exact number of windows in New York City. Because again, let's be honest, no one knows how many windows there are in New York and they're not going to expect you in an interview to know either with only 30 minutes in the interview, right? And so if you can just focus on taking a second, asking for some time and thinking through the equation that you wanna use and then walking your interviewer through that equation before you then do the math and then sanity check that number, then you'll just be so much better off in case interviews.
Now, if you liked the content of this video and you watched to the end, I'm actually putting together a community for people who are interested in consulting or strategy roles. If that sounds interesting to you, then feel free to check it out in the description below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.